Hello everyone, welcome back to Latina. So today we're talking about Stephanie and Nick Avocado. So Nick made an hour long video yesterday exposing Stephanie. He said a lot of bizarre things. He backed it up with some sort of receipts and he also threw a lot of his friends under the bus. Now I assumed that Nick had got permission from his friends before he released any text messages audios but it seemed like that wasn't the case at least not for zach zach did come on instagram and let everyone know that he did not give nick permission and those texts were invalid because they happened three months ago before he even built this friendship with stephanie so he did apologize to stephanie in private and stephanie did respond to nick's video on instagram where she called him a liar she also asked him why he was lying and then she decided to make a response video seems like nick cannot help himself but continue to lie to me manipulate his friends manipulate the truth manipulate my words and manipulate you guys this was not supposed to be drama this was supposed to be me voicing my concern for my safety my home privacy and how i felt about another creator abusing their platform there is unreleased footage that nick has and only he has it and it's of the second month that we filmed with me, Nick, and Zach. Please release it. You have my full consent and let the people decide. Was I making faces to set you up or was I truly scared? My home security footage. Now, I'm unable to release it to the public because California law, but Nick, give me your consent because you claim that I lied about so many things, whereas my home security footage says otherwise. So give me your consent if you truly think I'm a liar, if you truly think I'm a manipulator, if you truly think that your side is the truth, let me release the footage. And he said that the minute that he came over, I gave him this crazy whirlwind tour showing off, saying, guess how much that couch was? Guess how much that oven was? When have I ever showed off to you, Nick? It seems like you talk about my house more than I do. Let's first talk about her house. How oh, jealous, but also happy for her. Like, but jealous. Doesn't she have one of those ovens? It's like a five layer oven. Who uses that? I don't know. I really want a beautiful kitchen like Stephanie's. Her kitchen is perfect. Just because Stephanie has a beautiful house, which she does. I'm not saying like, oh, Stephanie's. I low key need that security system. I mean, a, a cat will walk by and the, the fire department will come, okay? And all of what you saw in those videos are prior to him ever being invited into my home. You said that I let you take a picture in front of me. So everything I said prior to that was a lie. Well, this is a picture that you showed in your video. And then you said that you took it because you wanted to see my lighting setup, which I do remember. You said, can I take a picture of your lighting setup? I said, yes. I don't know about you, but typically I'd like to get a closer shot of the actual lighting setup if I wanted a picture of the lighting setup. When I did go to the restroom, you did take pictures behind my back and I didn't approve of those pictures. So then you went on to release the exact pictures that I would never want on the internet. You released a picture of my kitchen with my security feed straight dab in the middle and you didn't have the courtesy to blur it out. Now, I, without your consent, cannot release the security footage of you taking pictures when I go to the restroom, but you release this picture. And if you zoom in closely, you're alone in my kitchen taking this picture. So you took the picture when I was in the bathroom. I have never recorded anyone ever without their consent. I took a photo with her consent. You and Orlin were FaceTiming and I gave him another whirlwind tour of how much money this couch is. And you know that's not true. You went around the living areas, you pointed at the couch. Seeing this was weird just because I don't know anyone who takes screenshots of FaceTimes. I mean, it's just a little strange, you know, when, when uh, he was showing he said, hey, let me show you what food we're eating. He switched the camera on his phone, but instead of pointing the camera down onto the kitchen counter, it was... Where the food is. <laughs> but it was to my face for a good three seconds. Some stuff. It's not like I walked into her house like this. <laughs> you did not come into our house doing this, but you did a lot of things that we weren't comfortable with. Why would you lie about such a... Why would you lie about something like that? Okay. <laughs> So give me your consent to release the security footage. We had discussed it was Stephanie's idea that she would have the last leg and I would look at her like, oh, what you doing? Because I'm, you know, the fat pig that loves to eat. And that was her idea. I didn't even count. I didn't even, I didn't even realize until when I watched the video. Why didn't she, why would she say to do this where we look at each other who's going to go for the last chicken leg? And then when the cameras are rolling, 
she just looks at the screen as if she doesn't know what I'm doing over there. And you had said this blatant lie with so much conviction, no evidence, just such a strong voice that I was like, did I do that? And so I reached out to Zach and he has the full unedited version of that and this is what happened. I got you some good comments. So she had the last thing, right? Oh, yeah. We were eating, and I was just sitting here, and I was going like this. Like, just be real, man. Just be real. And that was her idea. I didn't even realize. So, are you lying, or is that footage lying? I wanted to make this docuseries, and I wanted to highlight not only everything that happened with Shook Bung, and including what happened between Veronica and I, but also all of the personal conflicts that were involved. I wanted it to be less drama-focused, but more about the personal struggles behind all of the decisions that were made. My goal would be that things that need to be talked out can be, and would shine a new perspective and light onto all parties involved. To give you guys some perspective, this is what I said to Veronica, which Nick has never seen. We didn't leave off on the best terms, and she said, Hey Steph, I hope you're doing well. I know we left off on a really horrible foot, but I just wanted to let you know I've missed you. I also recently got accepted into a couple culinary schools in California, so I might be, I might be moving there for a year. I'll be there this week looking at apartments and was wondering if you'd like to meet up for food to talk. Let me know your thoughts. I responded, hey, yeah, I know it's been forever since we last spoke. We did leave off in such a shitty way, but I'm glad you reached out. I know it's super awkward after everything that's happened, but I'm genuinely happy that things are going super well for you. Bottom of my heart, congrats on all your success with culinary school. Let me know what days you'd be here. I'd love to talk. You know, I would also like to showcase a side of you that shows that you're not just here for the drama, but you're here for the underdogs. And the words she said to you hurt you and not just angered you. I would also like people to see a little glimpse of vulnerability from Nick Akato. Obviously to your comfort, just like how my perspective changed when I actually got to meet you in person. That is what I told the group chat and that is what I told Veronica. And Nick claims that I didn't do it because Nick didn't want to be a part of it. In reality, Veronica shut me down. She's moved on, she's thriving. You went on and on and on and on and on about Veronica in the videos that you made about her. You went on and on about her in my DMs. You went on and on and on about her at dinner when we first met. And you went on and on and on about her in that footage of that mukbang that you refused to release. This lady has so much upset feelings against Veronica Wang. So it will come across to the viewers as you trying to bring her back to being liked by everyone again. So do I have so much upset feelings about Veronica or am I trying to bring her back? Which one is it? Pitched me an idea to collab with me, Honey Eats, Kimmy, and herself to put on her channel. You say that I pitched an idea to you. You kind of took it out of context a little bit. Quick question for ya. I'm coming to LA either late March or start of April. Would you like to collab? Like I had mentioned, just me doing a video with Nick would make it seem like I'm taking a side in the drama. Whereas me doing a video with Veronica and Nick and talking about everything that's happened with everyone that it involved, that's just having an adult conversation. I think it, when it's just us two on screen at the, this point in time, it might stir the drama. I felt that she was very self-serving. Only reaches out to us if she want something out of us. Like, when have I ever reached out for you for anything? Here's Nick reaching out to me. I have a quick question. Have you experienced low CPM on your channels for November? Microwave promo. They told me you're doing it. Question mark. Are you doing that CBS interview? Do you want to collab? Stephanie? And did you put your home into a land trust? By the way, would the 8th and the 9th work good for you? Seems to have pros and cons. What do you think? Would you have felt better in a gated neighborhood? Or do you think that your property gate fence with cameras is good enough? Have you heard of Ring Security Camera? What's the name of your fancy security system? I'd like to research it. Are you happy with your home? Would you like to film together? I felt that she was very self-serving. You're the one that reached out to me. You're the one that asked to collab when apparently you didn't even like me. I didn't really like her. I didn't even know her. And you go on to say, Kenny doesn't like her. Kimmy doesn't like her. Honey Eats doesn't like her. Kimmy doesn't like her. Again, using other people's words publicly to hurt and humiliate other people, but I didn't know that at the time. 
but you knew that you didn't like me at the time, but you still wanted to collab so that our collaboration videos would get views. I think Stephanie's trying to capitalize on it. Remember what I said my first impression of Stephanie was? It was awesome, she was so nice, we went out to eat, we hung out for like seven hours. She had like little gifts for me. She had like this nice little champagne and little snacks and a nice card. My first impression of Stephanie was very self-serving. I didn't give her a gift, I, I, we were just gonna hang out and get to know each other. That was my first impression, like warm and bubbly, gave me a hug, said hello. Very self-serving. I didn't really like her. I love Stephanie Sue because I tell it like it is. I've obtained Zach's permission to read these text messages aloud today. And so at 2.58, Zach said, I honestly don't think he cares that he's gonna look bad. Also, I don't think he gets it either. I was telling him the whole time after how it was going to be perceived, but he didn't seem to get it and just chalked it up to his audience being dumb. We know where he stands. Does he actually like me or did he just want a video to try and expose me? I'm literally asking myself the same exact question. When would you like to reschedule? Prior to doing that, you had our privately saying, notice how her text to us didn't mention rescheduling, LMAO. I'm exposing her tonight. Emotional manipulation is not what I did to you. Please go watch my first video. I never implied that Nick sexually harassed me and within a couple hours, I got an email and a DM from someone and they showed me proof that they had met Nick in New York and they showed me pictures of their Snapchat between him and Nick talking about that date. Nick had a date in New York City and he claims that he didn't belittle the Me Too movement and he was a little bit upset that he had spent a lot of time and perfume and money on food for this guy that he met in New York and they didn't do anything afterwards. And he said, December 21st, when I posted my video that day, he said, Nick Okado did it to me. I am that boy that little Me Too video is about. I would love to talk to you about it. We have a lot in common. I have all the screenshots as well. And I said, hey, I got your email. I'm so sorry that something like this is how we're connecting for the first time, but thank you so much for reaching out. I'm so sorry for what happened in New York. I'm sorry you had to watch a video being made about you like that because the night didn't go as planned. Are you okay? Yes, I really was not in the moment. I was so scared because he kept making all these posts about how he was gonna tell this big story about me. And I kept begging him to not post anything about me because unlike him, I'm just a regular person with no level of fame. In the original video, he showed me, but with an emoji over my face and proceeded to call me a loser. It was just so crazy because like he did to you, he made me feel so comfortable in person when we first met. We talked all night and then when I left, he gave me a hug and said it was nice meeting you and I said it was nice meeting him too. So I thought we left on good terms. Then on Snapchat, he told me he was pissed that I didn't hook up with him. And then he went and filmed that rant video about me and he got so much hate for it. But it's scary because we filmed a regular video so he has that footage of me in addition to some naked pictures. I was so happy when it was all over because he could have destroyed me and still could. So yes, I think it's important to point out people's patterns of behavior, especially if it's a creator who's using their platform to threaten and to bully others. There's a huge imbalance of power since he knew that you didn't have a large audience. I truly, truly am so sorry for what he's done. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. If you need anything to help you through this process and to stop feeling the fear of him having these private pictures hanging over your head, I'm here for you. He is a mental abuser. He did the almost the exact same thing to the both of us. And it's so great that you made that video because I'm sure we are not the only people he did this to. If something comes up where he attacks you or something and you want me to tell my story, I'd consider doing it because he really needs to be stopped. Stephanie Sue invites herself into my collab with Zach. Didn't we all agree that the video would perform better if all three of us were in it though? And Nick said, it might, but that's not the point. She's very like, um, self-serving. She seems very manipulative. Rude. Like, I don't know how these people were raised. So that's the truth. You're using private conversations that you had with your friends talking badly about me, and I've never spoken to Carly Steele. I'm not sure how you can say her opinion about me is the truth. But you and Steve have to do this project together, and you don't really like Steve. You're gonna do it because that's your job. I only collab with people that I like. I liked you at the time. I didn't know that it was just a job for you. I didn't know YouTube was just a job for you. Uh, it's not a numbers game, but she's collabed with who? Veronica Wang and Be Loves Life. That's it. 
know what's also strange too? She wore her merchandise shirt in her accusation video. I really like my merch. I wear it a lot. Nick said in his Instagram story that there are two sides to every story. That's a lie. There's actually three sides to every story. There's my side of the story, there's Nick's side of the story, and then there's the truth. I believe that the truth is in the unreleased footage that he refuses to release where he interrogated me about Veronica and in my home security footage where he took pictures without my consent that he also refuses to give his consent for me to release. Bye. Now, after watching the video, it seems like some of the things Nick was saying wasn't mentioned as it happens. It seems like some of the things were twisted or added or fabricated to make Stephanie look bad. But Stephanie does a good job in this video, breaking everything down one by one and in order to let us know the actual truth. Now, I don't know if this is the actual truth, because like everyone says, there's always three sides to the story. One person's side, the other person's side, and the actual truth. And although we none of us were actually there, but it, it seems like some of the things Zach was saying backed up Stephanie's claims. So Stephanie wanted Nick to give her his consent to release her security audio. And then Stephanie also wanted Nick to post a video that he hasn't posted yet now at this point i don't think it's necessary i think a lot of people have made their mind and they're either going to support one person or the other because they have both spoken out and said this is what happened to me and then we have zach who's the third person who is basically speaking on the situation and i personally feel there's no need for them to release any more information i feel like at this point we all kind of have some kind of idea of what happened and we could all move on from that stephanie also tweeted this this is the last time i'll address this entire situation he posted my security monitor on his video plus mentioned specific location information about my house in another video due to this i have obtained attorneys to handle this matter going forward so it looks like Stephanie is officially suing Nick Avocado. So at this point, I think that they should just keep everything off social media and let the attorneys handle the case. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to comment and subscribe.